additive opportunities in industrial. That's what I'm gonna be talking to my buddy Nick about. So we work on industrial rotating equipment. So we do anything from pumps, agitators, and we go across a lot of different industries, oil and gas, water, wastewater. So there's lots of different industries. Anybody that is moving a fluid, we get involved in that industry. And when we talk about industrial, like I've got a blender at home, it spins. Yeah. <laughs> but we're talking about it to, for, for something as a comparison. You said in the food industry, big, massive industrial spinning yeah, type machines. Yeah, exactly. We'll work on pumps that are small, you know, would fit on this table, no problem to anything <laughs> yeah to anything up to we don't work on them in the facility but we get involved in equipment that can be eight feet wide so it'll be huge big. huge big equipment up in oil and gas fields and that kind of thing when we think about additive and 3d printing typically oil and gas uh industrial spinning machines that's not typically an application that I think of additive for, but you, you have one. There's the machine right back there and it's been going nonstop and we have some examples on the table. So could you lead me through the opportunities you found with additive in an industrial space? Certainly, yeah. So, so at, our, at our core, we're a job shop, machine shop. So we, we deal mostly, have dealt mostly in stainless steel, high wear metals, aluminum, and some plastics and composite, but like you said, it doesn't really get involved too much because you have high wear stuff. For example, <clears throat> this is called a lantern ring, and this is one that we machined, and it's made out of a nylon, it's just nylon metal, uh, nylon material. So this is milled nylon material. Correct, and it it's came called out a lantern of, ring. It's called a lantern ring. So it goes into, this is a, a simulated pump. This is a device that we make that is a training tool. So you can kind of see where the lantern ring would go Where's normally it? inside of the pump. So the problem with this particular part, and this is a particular part I would say is just perfect for additive because normally it comes out of a chunk of material similar to this. So it's about three quarters of <laughs> this material you need to make that because wait, you- Wait, may I? Yeah, please. Oh my gosh, that's right. <laughs> when we talk about milling something, you have a large chunk of the material you need to subtract in order to, to right. get the end so, use part. So you have to turn everything inside here into chips. You have to mill the outside down, and then you have to put it on another machine to drill the holes, or you have to do it on a CNC machine, and you have to do that setup. So there's a lot of manual labor involved. And for our customers, these can be, they don't need hundreds of these. They need one, two, three, and they may need them in different sizes. So a different setup oh. each time. Come to additive, and before we have had a couple of um, hobby level, you know, Prusa machines, Ender 3 type machines, okay. which have been great for sort of showing our sales guys prototypes. Yeah, prototyping, exactly. But okay. what we found was when the Pantheon came into view, we realized, oh, this is a machine that for a reasonable price, relatively speaking, can do engineering grade materials. Similar materials, so this is a nylon material, this is a glass filled nylon lantern ring, same size, printed on the Pantheon. Oh, and look at it that. Oh. Came off the machine just like that. So it's no supports, just on and off, that's it. No manual intervention. At all. I I love hearing that. Because when you go through the operations for this, it's it it could be multiple people, it's many hours, yep. it's it's intensive, it's it's an operator or operators doing the job in right. order to get this. How long did this take on the machine? So on this machine, I, I've done these in PLA, it took three or four hours. On this machine, that took an hour. An hour, and this is in, this is glass filled nylon, right? And I, solid. Oh, it's and it's 100% solid. 100% infill. This is, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and it took an hour. It took an hour. It took an hour, and that yeah. hour was you reading the paper, sipping yeah. the coffee. Yeah, well, and that's the thing, right? So, because additive is inherently a hands-off process. The machines are designed to not have intervention. You don't want to get in there messing around. Whereas if you have a CNC machine or a manual machine, a manual oh, machine, yeah. you're doing all the all work. Feel. Somebody's doing all the work. You're using less material, more environmentally friendly. It's just all the benefits. That's a perfect, perfect part for additive. And the beauty is too, is we can make it so we make these also split. If a customer doesn't want to take their pump apart to install, they'll have to make a split version. So usually when we mill this, we make a split version of this. You have to mill it flat, you have to pin it together. But with additive, we were able to design in a key 
you know, this is much harder to make. We could make this on a mill too, but it's more involved process. You can't do it manually very easily. And we were just able to make it additive and key it together. So now we have it all set up and it just fits together and then they can install. Can I, can I undo yeah, this? Yeah, please. Oh, that's satisfying. Yeah. <laughs> Well, this, the interesting thing about this is you mentioned you could mill this. Yes. It's possible. Yeah. But I would imagine the difficulty between milling this and this is exponential. Oh, exponential. Yeah, you have to start with the round that we talked about, obviously bigger. You have to make a oversized circle, then mill it, because of course you're taking that, you cut it in half on a bandsaw, then you mill the flats, and then your circle is no longer round, so you have to pin it together, then you somehow have to hold it together, because there's no screws and then you have to turn it round again. So it's, wow. it's a pain. I love that you've identified this as an additive opportunity because it's perfect. From what you're telling me here, this, yeah. is, this is an amazing way of using additive Absolutely. in an industrial process. Absolutely. And as you said, since we've got the Pantheon machine, it's essentially been running nonstop the whole time. In addition to being able to do some end use products, we were able to use it in some custom tooling. So we will have customers that come to us for example, this is a big nut for a pump. And what they have to do is normally- May I? Yeah, please, it's okay. quite like, substantial. Like that's, that's, like that's a chunky boy right yeah, there. Yeah, and there are, there are 20, 30 of these around us. That's what holds the half of the pump together. So then, okay, it, so this is a large nut for a pump. Yeah. This goes on and then these are all tightened to, to really kind of yeah. load it in place, right? So what has to happen is this when, is heavy, when that pump has to be rebuilt, they have to back off all of these, and then they have to turn this by hand. Well, you have millwrights that are doing multiple of these pumps, all turning these by hand. It's a, it's a repetitive stress injury. Is it really? Yeah, it is. So, like I know keyboard is repetitive stress, exactly. but they do this enough. Yeah, it's, to it's just that. Wow, I never would have realized. Absolutely. So we very quickly, within a matter of hours, designed up a very simple tool that just goes on. It fits a 3 8 drive that allows you to put a, I think put just a, a, a drill on a drill it or on a it. ratchet on, a air, you know, electric ratchet, air ratchet on it and can spin it off. And we believe that this material is gonna be just fine. You know, when you think about it, so <laughs> what's really interesting is, is you as a, a shop providing these solutions, if a millwright themselves wanted to experience something like this, what's really interesting is having, having a machine like that yeah. gives them engineering solutions in the same day, they, right. can, they can prototype the solution to a problem and have the solution done and printed in the same day. But I love this, I love this. And this is the, the glass filled nylon again, yeah. an engineering, well, you know, I, I hate calling it an engineering material because yeah. uh, I mean, I understand what it is, but I, a term you used, a high wear. Correct, so you have that, you have the carbon fiber nylon. This is the same tool in carbon fiber okay. and glass filled. Glass field tends to be a bit more durable, so you can make you know, more impact, which is why we're trying it out in that, because if they use a ratchet, you wanna have that right. durability. Um, carbon fiber nylon tends to be stiffer, than, but okay. both have same tensile strength, so you, you know, you're trying out different options, you're using different materials. The carbon fiber PET-G, which this one in here is, that is not as good in the higher temp environments, but much less expensive. Why use a really high grade material more expensive when you don't need to, yeah, right? If you're sense. using just a demonstration unit or this is a, an example. So one of the things we do is that we cut packing, which packing. is, yeah, which is so inside of a pump to seal it. One of the technologies that is still used a great deal is it's, it's almost like a greasy rope, we call it, but it's a graphite, rope. it's a graphite impregnated braided material that is stuffed into between the shaft and the stuffing box of a pump. So it keeps all of the fluid from leaking out into the open air. That's really what a big, that's the ceiling in progressive ceiling. That makes sense. Well, and for everybody out there, just, just to make sure, like a little bit of 101 here, there's, uh, there's something turning a shaft on this side and there's packing around the shaft. Correct. In order to keep whatever's on this side from going that way. Correct. Could be water, could be water and sand mixture, could be an acid, could be any number of things. And so what we do is we actually here in our facility, we will sell cut rings. So we actually need to cut them, but also our customers will buy this packing on a big spool and they, we, they want to cut it to the certain size. The right way to cut packing is to do it on a mandrel. 
is to do it in a circle. Okay. Some people will calculate the circumference and then lay it out. That's the wrong way. Well, wait a minute, wait a minute. So is it really, like, are we talking within millimeters? No, it just, it needs to fit well. So you're really, okay. and, and what you do is you cut it at a 45 degree so that you have less leak path, right? Because if you cut it straight, oh, that makes sense. water leaks right through. So yeah. you cut it at a 45 degree skive cut, we call it. And yeah, and so you cut it at 45 degree and you end up having less leak path and then you rotate those sky cuts all the way around for each ring. Ah. So you're, you're, you're creating a torturous path. That's the idea. Oh, I see. Water get through. So it's not, it's not perfectly watertight, but my goodness, it's, yeah, it that water's good. gonna have a difficult time getting <laughs> through. So what we did was we came up with a little system for our customers to have too, which is a, uh, this is clamped to a table normally. Now, wait a minute, wait a minute. Does that have to be metal? Working on that. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> when you come back next time, I might have this Sweet. one fully printed. And so we custom size, you know, different customers are going to have different size pumps. Oh, so this so is size to the shaft this size. This is size to the shaft size. So it just fits on. This is clamped to the table and you're using that to cut the packing, to size and cut the packing. So you can have a little kit that just has your, your mandrel set up. You can by multiple sizes that are multiple sizes of mandrels, oh. and you need a different size, we just make one up. And this is where we use the carbon fiber PET G. Oh, that makes because sense. Because we don't really need the strength of the carbon fiber or glass filled nylon, but you want the abrasion resistance with the carbon fiber in there because you're bringing down a utility blade mm -hmm. to cut. So you get that nice abrasion resistance, you get the strength that you need um, and the reasonable price for it and the speed. And the speed, that right. Yeah. Oh, that's cool. It's really interesting to see the opportunities in additive that you have. And it looks like back there, there's another, <laughs> there's another additive solution that you've come up with. Uh, but with, with the time savings now, because obviously in the before time, operators would operate machines to mill something down. And now they've got more free time or do they get to learn about additive or, or what's the plan there? Yeah, absolutely. So it allows us to take parts that we normally would have had to make in metal on another machine, we free up that person to move on to a next part that has to be made in metal. Ah. So we have, you know. Well, there's always parts that it, need to be exactly. made in metal. Exactly, it's okay. just that it's that force multiplier and it allows us to do certain things for our customers and get it gets them prototypes quicker, it gets them end use tools quicker that are needed in composite and then it frees up our workforce to be able to make the parts that are really necessary to make on the machines, on the manual mills or the CNC. One more question for you, Nick. So the, this machine back here, yeah. you said you've had it for now a week and a half, two weeks, and it's been going nonstop. And I feel like you sparked your imagination yeah. because you're coming up with these products, these solutions, these toolings. What do you envision the next 12 months to look like? Uh, my goal is to have at least a machine with each material. So have, okay. have three. And you, that way you're just, one machine is dedicated to the glass fiber, the carbon fiber nylon, and the carbon fiber PET-G. That's what I would love to see. Um, I think that would give us a lot of production capability. And I think it would allow us that flexibility to just keep that machine running. I love hearing that. Okay, so let's see. In 12 months, Nick, we'll come back and then we'll see what's going on. Maybe we'll see three of these Pantheon machines, maybe, maybe 20, maybe 30. Oh. <laughs> Well, thanks for joining us on this visit. And I'm really excited Nick got to tell you more about what they do here. And one of the things that I'm really thankful to have you along for is this journey into the industrial side because it's not just 3D printers making things, it's machines acting as tools to get specific jobs done. And we'll talk about more of that in 12 months when we come back. Listen, if you made this far, you're awesome. Don't forget to hug each other more, fight for a cause you believe in, print all the things. And as always, ready for this? We're gonna go that way. High five. You want one? Nailed it.